हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी एडजुअन थेरापी इन कोलोन कैंसर एडजुअन थेरापी मीन्स पोस्ट सर्जरी व्हाट वी आर गिविंग ट्रीटमेंट टू द पेशेंट इन कोलोन कैंसर वी गिव यूजली कीमोथेरापी फॉलोड बाय द सर्जरी इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द स्टेज ऑफ डिसीज द इंटेंशन ऑफ कीमोथेरापी इज ऑलवेज इन अ कैंसर मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम वी डू अ फ्रंट सर्जरी वन सर्जरी हैज बीन डन गिविंग कीमोथेरेपी ओनली द इंटेंशन टू टेक केयर दो सेल विच हैज ऑलरेडी श्रेडेड इन द बॉडी फ्रॉम द कैंसर सो दिस इज पर्टिक्युलरली डिफरेंट इन डिफरेंट स्टेजेस इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन स्टेज वन वी डोंट गिव कीमोथेरेपी स्टेज टू डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द मेनी मेनी ऑफ द फैक्टर वी डिसाइड वेदर टू गिव और नॉट टू गिव कीमोथेरेपी in stage 3 we usually give chemotherapy in stage 4 also we prefer to give chemotherapy different combination are different different uh, the different chemotherapy agents are there so we decide which patient to be given chemotherapy which patient not to be given chemotherapy it depends upon the benefit versus the risk benefit in the sense no chemotherapy drug is safe for everyone so we will give every patient if it is safe it's not like that chemotherapy drug come with particular set of complication so the intention of giving chemotherapy should not be more than harm due to chemotherapy that's what the basic thought process every stage does not get the chemotherapy drug now patient at the center we have to decide in a stage one whether is need of chemotherapy stage two need of chemotherapy stage three whether needed if needed what kind oxaliplatin irnaticon to be added if it is stage four metastatic what kind of chemotherapy those are all question we will see here stage one stage two if roughly we will take it depends upon adjuvant chemotherapy not required for stage one disease if it is a completely stage one disease adjuvant chemotherapy not at all required so the patient of stage 1 if suppose colon cancer has been resected turns to be a stage 1 no need of chemotherapy if options are there this that cycle of chemotherapy no need of chemotherapy only the follow up need to be done if the low risk stage 2 msi high means patient is there stage 2 and he is a low risk and msi is high that patient also no need of chemotherapy further detail we'll see subsequent slides stage 2 disease if msi is stable or mmr is proficient those patient definitely need a chemotherapy irrespective of high risk or low risk so high risk what is a high risk in stage 2 stage 1 very clear no need of chemotherapy stage 2 depends upon whether patient is high risk low risk now we have to understand what are the uh thing which are high risk in stage 2 t4 disease if the t is fourth t4 stage is there that is stage 2b or stage 2c these are t4 disease t4 stage of the disease if suppose patient who has been operated in emergency in view of perforation or obstruction definitely in spite of stage 2 this is a patient high risk he need a chemotherapy maybe lesser dose or lower combination but definitely he need a chemotherapy if the surgical margin is positive if suppose you have resected the tumor sent for pathologist pathologist tells that margin is indeterminate or your resected margin is positive these patient definitely need chemotherapy lymphovascular invasion if lymphatic or vascular invasion has been mentioned in the uh, your pathology report or perineural invasion has been mentioned in the pathological report sampling it is important in uh, stage 2 if suppose we have sent the colon resected sample right hemicolectomy sample and they have mentioned that you have sent the specimen specimen is having lymph node 10 only means it is less than 12 if less than 12 lymph node if they have mentioned definitely that patient need chemotherapy because in adequate lymph node has been resected so poorly differentiated histology excludes you of those cancer that are msi high if poor differentiated histology is there definitely need a chemotherapy so in stage 2 we need to understand what are the high risk feature if high risk feature 
irrespective of what is going on, we have to think in stage two to give. These are seven factors. T4 disease, patient became in emergency as a perforation or obstruction and it's due to cancer, indeterminate or positive resection margin, lymphovascular invasion, perineural invasion, inadequate lymph node sample that is less than 12 lymph node has been resected, poorly differentiated histology. These are main factors which are high risk. These patients need a chemotherapy in a stage 2 disease. Algorithm if we take, if suppose patient is stage 1, very clear, no need of chemotherapy. So, if you have been given a, a, a question where he is telling a different story, it is a colon cancer, right hemicolectomy done and pathologist has mentioned it is stage 1, whether to need a chemotherapy, adjuvant chemotherapy, no need of adjuvant chemotherapy. Same is very clear in stage 3. If it is stage 3, definitely need of chemotherapy. Now, question is in a stage 2, whether there is need of chemotherapy or not, that we have to decide. In stage 2 disease, if there is a high risk, those seven factors I have already mentioned, if those high risk factor, uh, factors are there, suppose one story is there, 70 year old, uh, 60 year old man coming with obstruction, he has underwent a sigmoidectomy for sigmoid cancer. So obstruction and turns to be stage 2 definitely need a chemotherapy. So high risk feature, any feature which has been mentioned in last slide 7 feature are there, those patients need a chemotherapy. There is no question. Now most important confusing question is suppose that patient is low risk, not having any high risk feature. In that scenario, the patient if MSI is high, those patients definitely we can avoid chemotherapy. If patient is MSI low, MSI stable, these patients need a chemotherapy. There is a very wise study has been done. They have found out that if patient is MSI high, in this patient, if we give chemotherapy, it does not benefit for the patient or the benefit of the chemotherapy is less than the complication due to the chemotherapy. So, selectively in stage 2, low risk patient with MSI high, definitely you should avoid giving chemotherapy. This is crux of giving chemotherapy for the patient. Let's move on. Benefit of combination of oxaliplatin. Now, there is a drug that we, what we follow is 5-fluoracil and oxaliplatin combination. These are the multiple combination will come. Fall flox, fall ferry, many combination are there. There are landmark trial demonstrating mosaic trial and NSABPC07 trial and Zeloxa trial. This trial has shown that, all have shown that <coughs> if we add oxaliplatin, yield significantly improve disease-free survival, reduce the recurrence, improve the overall survival, reduce reduction of death 12 to 16 percent, but this is only significant for stage 3. Now question is there, suppose patient has a tumor and that is stage 2, high risk or low risk with MSI high, MSI stable, this patient need chemotherapy. Should we take a patient of capacitabine or we should take patient with uh, Falfox means uh, oxaliplatin combination. These stage 2 disease, oxaliplatin should be avoided because oxaliplatin commits set of, com uh, set of complication or set of major side effect that does not add benefit in stage 2. So stage 2 oxaliplatin is avoided in stage 3 oxaliplatin is indicated. If we are having stage 3, stage 3 very much clear, stage 1 no chemotherapy, stage 3 definitely chemotherapy. But in stage 3 also, should we give complete chemotherapy for 6 months or should we get give a lesser duration of chemotherapy? That is a question. This idea trial what they have found out is low risk patient T1, 2, T3 and N plus disease, those patient adjuvant treatment option of 3 month of capox that grade 3 neurotoxicity rate or lower in patient who receive 3 month of capox or 6 month of falfox. High risk patient T4, N1 or N2, any N T with N2 prefer to give 6 month of falfox. 70 plus addition of oxaliplatin benefit not proven. So should be avoided. What is that thing is in a stage 3 disease, 
low risk that is T1 to T3 or N1 disease those patient we can get over those patient with 3 month of cap ox but if it is a high risk T4 N2 disease N1 plus N2 disease these patient are high risk even if it is stage 3 high risk we have to consider to give complete fall fox of 6 months. So all these trials and everything is to give to the patient at a lesser side effect how we can give a benefit. If the benefit is less side effect it is more we have to tailor. So very clear stage 1 disease no chemotherapy stage 2 high risk chemotherapy 7 factor has to decide low risk patient MSI high no chemotherapy MSI low chemotherapy. Now question is in stage 2 no oxyl platin very much clear stage 3 disease we have to think of giving capox or falpox but if stage 3 disease low risk or a low risk that is T4 N1 disease those patient T3 N1 disease T1 to T3 N1 disease these patient we can get over by capox of 3 month rather than 6 month of falpox. So in stage 3 high risk we have to think of giving falpox completely for 6 month. Stage 3 chemotherapy based on idea trial what we can think of it is a low risk we have to give 3 month of capox it is a high risk group we can give 6 month of falpox. Adjuvant therapy decreases risk of death by absolute 3 to 5 percent in stage 2 with single agent 5 UFU or capox in, and in 10 to 15 percent in stage 3 with falperidine alone plus 4 to 5 percent with oxaloplatin containing combination. So what this more trial is telling if it is a stage 2 disease the addition of adjuvant therapy 5 5FU or capacitabine is going to give benefit of 3 to 5 percent. So no need of oxaloplatin. If stage 3 disease addition of oxaloplatin along with 5 fluoridine will give adequate benefit. So stage 3 you give combination of falpox or capox. Myos clinic or Rosalver Park regime is a bolus 5-FU along with leucovirin. Degrometrazine is a leucovirin with 5-FU and CALB, CALGB89803 trial is negative trial related to irniticon combination with 5-FU. So irniticon is a, another one highly side effective drug should be avoided in initial phase usually they give when a disease is recurrent so falfox is acceptable till stage 3 but in stage 3 in initial phase irneticon is not added because it has a negative impact systemic chemotherapy therapy or chemo radiation if a cancer is locally unresectable when radiation come if it is unresectable and patient is medically inoperable it is recommended possibly goal of converting lesion to resectable stage. If it is unresectable or medically inoperable then only we can give chemo RT but usually in colon cancer chemo RT role is not there. Now this is the thing. Now we will go for something easier for inhibitor. EVGF inhibitor cetuximab that is chimeric mouse human monoclonal antibody. Panitumab it is a fully human monoclonal antibody. EGFR receptors overexpress in 60 to 80 percent of colorectal cancer. EGFR inhibitor are effective only in wild type of Keras genes. Confirm the absence of Keras mutation before the use of EGFR is recommended by panel. The Keras um, gene is important that is wild type or mutant type. Wild is normal, mutant is uh, converted. So whenever we are thinking to give EGFR inhibitor, the mandatory to do the KRAS study. If KRAS is wild type, EGFR effective. Means if suppose any cancer which is metastatic come to OPD, then we as a clinician or our tumor board first they will do KRAS. If KRAS is mutant or KRAS is wild, if wild type then we will consider giving cetuximab or panitumab. If KRAS is mutant, the question of giving EGFR inhibitor is ruled out. Factor affecting anti-EGFR therapy in metastatic colorectal cancer. Whether RAS and BRAF status we have to know. Whether which side of the tumor we have to know. Patient suitability for bevacizumab is there or not we have to know. 
कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन ऑफ बेवस इज मा पेशेंट दीज आर एंटी विजीएफ इनिबेटर दैट इज ब्लीडिंग टेन्डन्सी एक्टिव ब्लीडिंग अनट्रीटेड हिमोरेजिक ब्रेन मेटास्टेसिस हिस्ट्री ऑफ आर्टेरियल थ्रोम्बो इम्बॉलिजम इन सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व मंथ प्रायर टू ट्रीटमेंट दीज आर द एक्टिव कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेशन ऑफ बेवस इज मा If suppose we have seen stage one, stage two, stage three disease, now metastatic colorectal cancer. We are having in hand the EZFR inhibitor like uh, say tuzumab, panitumab, VZ, um, vascular endothelial growth inhibitor like bevacizumab. What we need to decide is whether patient is RAS mutant, K-RAS mutant or K-RAS wild type. RAS mutant bevacizumab plus chemotherapy. Uh, bevacizumab plus chemotherapy. If suppose BRAF mutant. then bevacizumab the chemotherapy only patient with a ras wild type and braf wild type will be subjected for the ezfr inhibitor the right colon we can think of bevacizumab only and if it is a left colon we can give a ezfr inhibitor plus chemotherapy so it's very clear that if it is a metastatic stage 4 colorectal cancer if it is a mutant at ras and braf no role of ezfr inhibitor that is a panitumab cetuximab if suppose they are wild type right sided are right sided cancer Now suppose a patient with ca colon which is ca cecum with metastatic status and even if it is a patient with wild ras or braf wild type is not going to give response to ezfr inhibitor so ras wild and braf wild type if it is there and it is left sided tumor then only ezfr inhibitor should be combined with chemotherapy chemotherapy is folfox or folfiri along with that whether to add this monoclonal antibody that is the question so for that question we have to do ras and braf mutation if it is a wild type not mutant type and that is of the left side then only there is role of uh, panitumab cetuximab otherwise we have to do bevacizumab with chemotherapy follow up for protocol for colorectal cancer usually in our opd colorectal cancer once go home we tell them to do ca level 3 monthly for 2 year 6 monthly for 2 to 5 year colonoscopy a yearly once till 5 year after 5 year 5 yearly once ct abdomen chest yearly once for 3 year yearly once for 3 years 5 year overall survival rate is 5 year overall survival rate for colon cancer stage 1 usually 90% stage 2 it's up to 75% stage 2 disease will have 5 year survival and stage 2a will be 85% stage 2b 75 2% stage 3 will have 50% stage 4 have 5% approximately 85% of recurrence will be seen in 2 year of resection so intensive surveillance will be needed for 2 year and a hepatic isolated metastasis amenable valve resection survival rate is 20% thank you